The Safe Empowerment System will help you relieve your anxiety. Check out the full audio program at quietbegins.com. Life presents the toughest challenges. Every day you are faced with decisions that test your ability to express who you really want to be in this world. We're told to keep saying affirmations and keep thinking positively, but what do you do when that stuff doesn't work? Welcome to the Overwhelmed Brain, where you'll learn to make decisions that are right for you so that you can create the life you want now. Hello and welcome to the Overwhelmed Brain. My name is Paul Coliani and I'm here to help you increase your emotional intelligence, strengthen your self-worth and self-esteem, so that you can make decisions that are right for you. If you're a regular listener and you notice that the show sounds a little different, it's because I'm on the road. I'm on a portable podcasting studio device here, and I wanted to get a show out. I wasn't going to be able to get a show out if I didn't do something, and this is that something. (laughs) So this isn't the normal quality of this show. It actually is normally a higher production value, but uh, I wanted to get a show out this week. I'm normally in my office recording in Georgia, but I'm in New Hampshire on vacation, but I didn't want to miss out in getting you a show, getting this out into the world and perhaps help you out with something that's going on in your life. I do address an email today and uh, hopefully what I talk about in the email and the stuff I share affects you as well in a good way and uh, changes your life for the better. So uh, this is a second beginning that I had to record because the first beginning was all messed up. (laughs) The the first recording that I made was just messed up. So what I'm going to do is just the beginning got messed up, and I'm going to play you the rest of the recording, which was 95% of what I got. Uh, I just had to re-record this beginning. So this is going to be a transition into my recording from before, and... There's not much to miss here. Uh, I just before introduced the show and said something like, and this is true, everything I say on this show is my personal opinion and is meant for informational and educational purposes only. Always consult a medical doctor or a psychologist or a therapist if you have any questions regarding your physical or mental health. And if you're going to make any changes or anything like that, seek a professional. I'm a professional in a different capacity. I'm a coach. Uh, But, you know... I have to say this stuff because I want you to be safe. I want you to get the help you need if you need help. Otherwise, I'm so glad you tuned in. I'm going to mosey us into the transition now, and it's really good to connect with you. Here I come. This is why I'm doing this show. You're going to hear background noise. You're going to hear some distracting sounds. Like right now, I'm on a dirt road because I'm in Pittsburgh, New Hampshire, which is four miles from the Canadian border. And I've got my little portable recorder going right now. But I wanted to get this show out there and talk about something that I received in an email. Uh, I get tons of emails, which means I get tons of emails that sit for a while. And the email I'm going to talk about today, or at least one of them, is uh, something I received a year ago. And so I'm sure the situation is maybe completely different by now, or not. Because sometimes we get into a challenge that uh, doesn't resolve and it may not resolve for months or years like my mom she had a problem for 40 years that never resolved until it did and you know i told the told the story in other shows but it resolved by him finally leaving her and that was one of the best days of her life because she was able to get out of the toxic relationship She didn't initiate it, though. And this is what I noticed in a lot of situations where people are in a problem that they want to resolve, but they don't want to initiate the resolution. They don't want to initiate the steps it takes to resolve the problem, so they stay in the problem because they're not suffering more than they are now, if that makes sense. And what that does is cause people, you, if you're in that situation, to stay in the toxic environment with toxic people for a lot longer than you want to. Like you say you don't want to be around that toxic environment and you say you want things to change, but you don't actually do anything to change them. You hope that somebody else does them. And 
I got to tell you, 99 out of 100 times when you're in a toxic situation around toxic people doesn't change. That's a, a dismal number, and I might be completely incorrect about it, but what we end up doing is believe we have a chance. We believe we might have a change, that the other person will finally realize that they're hurting us, that they're hurting themselves, that they're hurting the family, that they are just toxic. But I've seen it over and over again that the toxic person doesn't change, unless you do. So this is not necessarily the direction I'm taking this show today, but I wanted to put that out there, is that when we're in any type of toxic situation, toxic environment, um, unhealthy situation, then we have to know that that normally doesn't change unless we do, unless we take the step, unless you take the step to do something for yourself, to take a step in a direction that is healthy for you, not only for you, but for them as well. Because what often happens is that when you finally decide, you know what, I can't stand this environment, I can't stand this person, or at least their behavior, I need, to, I need something to change. And then make that change, or at least take a step toward that change, what you end up doing is creating a new dynamic in the environment. When you are ready to take a step out the door, perhaps the toxic person will go, whoa, there's accountability for my actions. I shouldn't say perhaps, it's a lot of the times they will. Most of the time they will. Most of the time they'll say, wow, there's accountability for my, for my actions. I better do something different now because there's finally change happening that makes them fearful of what's happening. It makes them fearful that they're not going to be able to get away with their behavior anymore. This is why more often than, than not, when I work with a, a client who's in an emotionally abusive situation, that everything they try in the relationship typically doesn't work because they're still in the relationship. That dynamic, that formula never changes. So they stay in this relationship and do nothing that threatens the relationship, do nothing that threatens their existence in the relationship, their role in the relationship, but only hope the other person changes or the other person becomes suddenly self-aware and externally aware that they are toxic, that they are unhealthy, uh, and then they change themselves. But that doesn't happen. I never see that happen. I mean, rarely. It, it's rare that it happens. I did work with someone who finally was able to see his own behavior and make the changes he needed to make. But it took months. And it took months of us working together directly where I was constantly causing him to reflect on his own behavior to see how it was coming across to the other person, to see how it was continuously an unhealthy pattern and what the result of that was going to be. And this person went from who he was, which was pretty toxic and uh, very selfish, to someone who was more selfless and a self-aware, externally aware, more present. And he made the shift. He made the switch. It can take a while. But uh, when you're in a mindset for most of your life and you follow your old patterns for most of your life to switch to new patterns, it's sometimes a huge step and a huge leap of faith because there are fears in changing your pattern. There were fears in him changing his patterns. And when we were able to break through those old fears and figure out what he actually feared and getting past those fears and realizing, okay, if it does get to the worst case scenario, can I handle it? And when the answer is yes, you can break through those old patterns. So there is hope for some people, but you can't hold out that hope that they'll change while you're in the same dynamic you're in. That's why it sometimes takes a massive shift, a massive leap of faith, a massive step in a different direction so that you change the dynamics, so that you change the environment, so that you change their behavior in response to your behavior. Uh, you are the stimulus to their behavior. You're the enabler to their dysfunction. Not that it's your fault, not that you're responsible for their behavior, 
but you are responsible for the role you play in the environment that creates the dynamic where uh, toxic behavior can flourish. So when you know you play the role, this gives you an opportunity to play a different role. And you also have to figure out what is the accountability that needs to happen in order for toxic behavior to change. Not that it's your job to present accountability. It's actually your job to take care of yourself. Especially around a toxic person, you have to take care of yourself. And yes, that might mean leaving the situation, leaving the relationship, disconnecting from the person, breaking ties with them altogether. It could mean that. Uh, it's just a matter of understanding what you need for yourself, what makes you happy, healthy, and whole, and who you allow into your life uh, that changes that. And the reason I brought that particular uh, subject matter up today is because the email that I received that I'm going to read momentarily, um, again, probably about a year old, but it's still an evergreen subject matter, meaning it is something that people have gone through 100 years ago and they'll probably go through 100 years from now. It's just something that is everlasting. So it's an important subject to talk about and get to some forward momentum to get through it. And um, this person that wrote at least last year, is in a situation that um, she wants to change, but it isn't changing, and she doesn't know what to do about it. So it's going to be a fairly short episode today, I think, because I'm on the road, and you know it's a little challenging thinking <laughs> clearly while I'm driving, uh, but I am stopped right now. Uh, but let me get to this email just so we can start talking about this and see where we go with it. I'm going to call this person uh, Linda. Linda says, Dear Paul, I've listened to your podcast when you just can't figure out why you're unhappy, she's talking about an episode I had, I don't know, two years ago, and I really like the idea of meditation for breaking connections. I do need to I do need to ask you a question if you don't mind. I enjoy breaking them so much that going back to my reality made me feel miserable. Let me just explain what she's saying. Um, in that episode, I talk about creating a, a mind map on a piece of paper. And the mind map would look something like this, where you create a circle in the middle of a piece of paper, and you put yourself there. You write your name or something. And from that circle, you draw a line and create another circle. And that circle has, let's just say, someone's name in it. And then from the center circle, again, your name, you draw another line and another circle, and that has someone else's name on it. And then you draw another line from the center and make another circle, and that has someone else's name in it. Everyone in your immediate family, everyone that you relate to sort of on a regular basis, or even on an irregular basis, even infrequently. And not only people, but also like your job and your hobbies. And you start making this map of your life in all of your associations. So I might have a map of my girlfriend and our house in Georgia and our goldfish and her son and her son's dad and my podcast and my coaching and everything associated with me. And what you'll do after you've written out this mind map is look at each item and ask yourself, does this make me happy? Or does this bother me in some way? It doesn't have to be the, these exact questions, but you're basically looking for how you feel with each new circle that's connected to the center circle. So I might think about, okay, my girlfriend's son's dad. How do I feel about him? And I'll have a feeling about him. And then, you know, I just look at these. I don't, you don't have to do, take a long time on doing that. But I'll just look at all these. How do I feel about that? And then what I'll do is I'll cross one circle out. Pick any circle except yourself and cross it out. And then ask yourself, how do I feel now that that's not in my life? And what this does is helps you eliminate unhappiness, at least in this visualization. So in my past, I might cross out my stepfather. When he is out of my life, he's out of the picture. How do I feel now? Am I happier? Am I less happy? Am I more fulfilled? You know, ask these questions. And my answer might be, wow, my life is a lot easier. I feel happier. And so one step toward happiness might include a life without him in it. And so this can be an interesting exercise to help you understand what makes you happy, what makes you unhappy. And then when you have all these cross outs of the things that make you unhappy, 
what's left is probably the most ideal life you can think of, or at least closer to ideal, because you'll probably want to add circles too, like what would make me happy, what would be better. But um, that's not what this exercise is necessarily about. It's eliminating what makes you unhappy in your life. So this is what uh, Linda's talking about. It's in my episode called When You Just Can't Figure Out Why You're Unhappy. You can go to theoverwhelmedbrain.com and look in the search field for that. Um, but she liked the idea of the breaking the connections, which is crossing the circles out. Um, she said, I, asked, I have to ask you a question. Um, I enjoy breaking them so much that going back to my reality made me feel very miserable. I get it. I get you, Linda. It made me feel that I am very unhappy in my life. Yes, it can reveal that. As you can probably imagine, I can't break these connections. They involve my family. I'm very close to my sister and her child. And um, they're people that I love. Having these connections makes me think about their well-being all the time, and I have to deal with the drama. I am a very happy person normally, but things that are out of my control make me feel stuck. I can't break these connections in real life. But when I meditate, that is what makes me happy. What would you advise me to do in this situation? Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Linda. <laughs> That's an excellent question, Linda, because you're absolutely right. You're going to have all these connections in your life, and then you're going to come back to reality, like coming back from a seminar that motivated you, and then you come back from the seminar, and then uh, the motivation goes away. That's what, kind of what it feels like. You're going to have all of these connections that make you unhappy, and now you're back to reality. So the visualization helps you feel good in the moment, but what do you do with reality? So this is where uh, I like to look at these things as now that I understand what makes me unhappy, then I think the very first step is to expose myself less often to these things. So if I had no choice but to deal with my stepfather continually, which, you know, when I'm in New Hampshire, which I am now, I'm probably going to end up seeing him. I don't want to. I'm happier when I don't see him, but I'm probably going to end up seeing him. But how much am I going to allow myself to be exposed to him, to be around him, to be near him, to do anything with him? I guarantee you very little. If he's over a family member's house and uh, we're all invited to go over, I probably won't really talk to him. I'll be cordial. I'll be respectful. But I probably will just limit my time around him, limit my exposure to him. It's that relationship radiation I talked about before. When someone is radioactive, you try to stay away from them. And that's the best thing you can do is you try. But sometimes you can't. Sometimes there are people in your life that are so connected, they're so connected to other people in your life that you love and that you're associated with, that it's hard to get away from the people that make you unhappy or the environments that make you unhappy. So it can be hard to get away from these people. So step one is to limit exposure. And that can be hard to do, but you, you have to. This is for your well-being, for your health. Because the more you're exposed to these people, these situations, or the drama that you're talking about, the more unhappy you are. And then how do you bring your best version of yourself to the rest of your life? You can't expose yourself to this relationship radiation. You can't expose yourself to radioactive people. You have to steer clear of that as best you can. So that's step one. You know, limit exposure. It's hard to do sometimes. How am I going to limit exposure? I see him every day or I see her every day. You find little ways. You might even want to make another mind map that you put their name in the center and then you write down, you put lines out and make new circles and you write down everything that bothers you about that person. And then you might want to put a rating of what bothers you most. Like that bothers me from a, on a scale from 1 to 10, 10 being the highest at a 9. And that bothers me at a 6. And that bothers me at a 10. And that bothers me at a 2. So you have all these things, little and big, that bother you about that person on the sheet in front of you. And then you go, okay, how can I limit my exposure to this particular behavior? Because sometimes it's just one behavior. Sometimes it's just one single behavior that bothers you about the whole person and you don't want to be around the person. But what would, what would happen if you limited your exposure to that one behavior? 
That's what I had to do with my stepdad, is that when he became drunk, I limited my exposure to him. So I could handle him the rest of the time. It was easier. So that's just, you know, this is kind of personal growth 101, the basics. But you limit your exposure to the behavior or the person as much as you can. Uh, This helps you be more fulfilled in your life. Be one step closer to happiness. More fulfilled is probably overstating it, but you're one step closer to happiness. And when you're one step closer to happiness, you feel a little bit better inside. So step one, limit your exposure. Find ways to do it. Limit your exposure to the person if you can, or at least the behavior if you can. Again, using that uh, process of elimination I talked about. Step two is getting really clear about the people that bother you or the people that make you unhappy or the places or the things that make you unhappy that if you either choose to have them in your life because there are other things that you do love um, or you can't help but be around them or whatever, you're constantly exposed to them or at least frequently, then what you need to do is come to a place of acceptance that they will never change. This can be very very liberating. If you accept someone's toxic behavior as always being toxic, they will never change. I will never be able to change this person to make them see differently, to make them act differently. If you come to that acceptance that you can't change them and they will never change, then you give in to reality. It's kind of terrible when I put it this way. You're giving in and you have no choice. Because when you believe you have choice, then you carry around the hope that someone will change and you carry around the waiting aspect. I'm just waiting for them to see the light. I'm just waiting for them to do something differently, to realize that they're hurting me. When we take out the waiting by taking out the hope that they will change, then we finally accept who they are. I think that's what we do. We don't want to accept who someone is. They can't possibly be that bad or they can't possibly be that hurtful or harmful. I don't want to accept who they are. But when you do, you accept that they will never change and that's who they'll always be. You'll have no choice but to give in to reality. And when you give in to this reality, you take out the waiting, you take out the hope, and you realize they're never going to show up any other way. So I either have to accept that that's who they are or continue to inflict this punishment on myself, this suffering. Not really punishment, but suffering. And the way you continue to inflict your own suffering is to hope that someone else will change. I mean, that's pretty much what happens when you're around toxic people that you can't stand to be around or toxic behavior that you can't stand to be around is that when you hope that they change, You cause yourself to suffer by continuing to hope and wait for it to happen. So how do you eliminate the suffering? You accept that they will never change. You may may still not like their behavior, and they may still be being harmful, but if you accept that that's who they'll always be, then you'll be in a better space to be able to handle it. You'll be in that more forgiving space, not that you're forgiving them, but you're forgiving of their inability or choice not to change. When you get into that space, you get into a better space in yourself. And just like I know my stepfather will never stop getting inebriated around me or my family and becoming really impossible to deal with, then I know what to expect and I just allow it to happen and not get bothered by it because I'm not busy in myself, in my own thoughts, hoping that he'll change or thinking that I can find a way to change him or trying to convince him that he needs to do something else with his life or trying to convince him that drinking is not good for him and he needs to go to AA or whatever. I take all of that off the table because there's nothing I can do to change that person. Say that with me. (laughs) There's nothing I can do to change that person. Now say the next one. So I'll accept who they are. And I'll accept their behavior. And that might be hard to say. That might be hard for you to get into that space to be that forgiving of their inability to change or their choice not to change. That might be hard to accept, but accepting it puts you on a different level. It takes you out of the hope and want and allows them to be who they are. 
because we want people to change. We want toxic people to do things differently so they're not toxic. We want unhealthy people to show up healthy so that our lives will be better. But know that they won't and you take your hopes and your dreams and your wishes out of the equation so there's no more desperate wanting of things to be different. You just know that this is the way it'll always be. It doesn't mean life is awesome after that. It just means you stop putting so much time and energy into how the other person shows up for you or for anyone. You just take your thoughts and your energy out of the equation. And that can be very helpful. So that's number two. The third thing I'm going to tell you, Linda, and anyone listening, is to remember that, yes, there will be certain people in your life that you don't want to disconnect from, that you want to keep in your life. And I want you to kind of weigh your happiness versus your unhappiness. Let's just say that you get along with your sister wonderfully, but there's just so much drama all the time that you're more unhappy than you are happy with her. Just throw this out there for a moment. Think of someone in your life that even though they show up in so many good ways, that the bad outweighs the good. And because the bad outweighs the good, you end up more unhappy when you're with them than you are happy. If you throw that concept out there and you realize that, they, that someone makes you more unhappy than they do happy, and you have the option of having them in your life or not, or exposing yourself to that kind of toxic behavior, relationship radiation or not, and you choose to continue to expose yourself to that toxic situation or a toxic person, then by doing so, what you're telling yourself is that I'm willing to be less happy and keep this person in my life. Now, I'm wording it that way because I want you to be very clear that's what's happening. If you can say, I'm willing to be less happy or I'm willing to be unhappy, if you want to word it that way, because I need to keep this person in my life for whatever reason, then that's another level of acceptance, first of all, because you're accepting that you're willing to take a loss here. You're willing to compromise. You're willing to keep yourself in a less happy place because that person is so important to you, which it's kind of an oxymoron. It's kind of not synchronous of how life is supposed to work out. Like we're supposed to be around the people that empower us, the people that make us feel good about ourselves. Uh, but when you're around people that don't do that or show up in the opposite way, you'd think it would be better not to be around those people. Personally, that's how I operate. That's what I do. If there's someone I love and I love having them in my life and they are part of my family even, but they make me unhappy more than they make me happy. Or they bring so much drama that I can't be myself or comfortable around them, then I will see them less and maybe even not at all. That's just how I operate. I'm not saying you have to do that. But I have chosen to eliminate certain aspects and people. Eliminate's a strong word. I didn't mean to use that word. But not be around certain environments, not be around certain people, because what's most important is that I have the capability to show up as my best self. And how do I show up as my best self in every situation? I try to keep my exposure to toxicity at a minimum. Can't always do it. You know, you, you do your best. You can't always do it. But I do my best to try and always go in that direction. Now, that doesn't mean I, I stop learning all my lessons and I keep all the challenges of my life. I actually face these challenges. I actually talk with these people if they're really bothering me. And I actually honor myself with these people. Like for you, when they get into the drama, you could honor yourself and say, Hey, look, I understand that you're going through a lot. But if you really have a problem, why don't you fix it? Why don't you solve it? Instead of just talking about it all the time. I'm not saying you should say that. But, you know, this is where how you show up is going to help people make the choice to change if they want to change or not. If someone was always drama, drama, drama around me, I think I would say, well, let's go fix it. Let's go fix the problem. You know, you're telling me the same thing over and over again. Let's see what we can do to resolve it. Because most people that are in their drama don't want to resolve the problem. They just want the attention or they just want the support or the connection that they get from commiserating or whatever. And I don't, it's hard to play that game for me. 
I don't like playing that game. So you, Linda, may have these connections in your life, these associations and relationships that you really want, but you yourself aren't showing up in a way that's more authentic where you say, hey, look, I don't want to be around your drama. Let me know when it's over or give me a call when you're done. If you show up that way, they may or may not disappear from your life. But this is sort of number four, is where you honor yourself around people that bother you. And when you honor yourself, they're going to have a choice. You empower them with the choice. Hey, I'm going to show up this way, and it's up to you how you want to show up. So you're saying, I still want to be around you. I still want to be near you. I love you. But I don't want that, your behavior, in my life. So I'm going to step away from you while you're in that behavior, and I'll come back when you're not. Again, you change the words to fit the situation and however you talk to these people. But when you get into that space of, this is not right for me, this is not good for me, so I'm going to step over here, and you have your little tantrum, you have your little drama, or whatever it is, uh, and when you're done, let's reconnect. And hopefully they'll respect your choice to stay away from their drama because people who love and support you and want the best for you are going to respect what you choose for yourself. But if you show up in these relationships not choosing what you want for yourself, not speaking your mind, not being authentic, then you continue to get the same results. You know, the more you show up the same, the more same you get. Uh, So the results that you don't want can continue if you keep showing up in a way that presents the same stimulus for them. If you're the same person, they're going to be the same people. And I know it's scary to show up as your authentic self and say, hey, look, I don't want your drama. I mean, if you said that to certain people, they may shut you out of their life forever. And that may be what happens. And that's probably the fifth and final thing I want to talk about today is knowing that there are consequences to being authentic, to being yourself, and doing it anyway. Because what's more important than showing up as your best self? Not much. Because if you show up as your best self, it gives everyone else the opportunity to show up as their best self as well. So imagine that gift you can give to other people by showing up as your most authentic, most honest, at least as much as you can be. You know, I don't recommend going around being brutally honest, saying, well, you're a jerk, I don't want to be around you but being diplomatically honest and also being honest from a perspective that this is what's right for me and this is what I'm going to do for myself. And then conveying that to the person in a way that empowers them to choose to show up that way in front of you or not. Not saying that you're trying to change them and they don't have to change. Because what you're saying there is I'm allowing you to be you. Will you allow me to be me? I do not wish to be exposed to this behavior, so I'm going to put myself over here. And when you're done, we can reconnect because I love you. That's pretty honest. That's pretty authentic. And if you can start showing up that way, you can start changing your life because, again, what will happen is that the people who love you and support you and respect you and want the best for you are going to be supportive of that decision that you're making for yourself. And the people who only want what they want for themselves, regardless of how you feel about it, they may disappear because they're not going to want to compromise. They're not going to want to sacrifice. They're not going to care enough about your well-being in order for them to question their own behavior or make any, again, compromise for you to show up any differently. And that's when you find out who is really committed to being in the relationship with you or not. This, This sounds harsh, I know. This sounds like a very bold step, and it does sound like, well, if I did that with so-and-so, of course they would never want me in their life again. But you're either going to continue sacrificing your happiness for other people, or you're going to show up as yourself and say, look, I don't want that behavior in my life, and they have a choice to show up with that behavior or not. Not that they have to change, but that they realize their behavior is harmful to you. And when someone realizes their behavior is harmful to you because you said it in some way, shape, or form, they have a choice to stop that behavior or not. And those that don't stop that behavior, in my opinion, don't care enough about your well-being, about your happiness, to modify their behavior around you 
and all they care about is their own selfish needs, their own selfish ways. And I know I'm treading on thin ice here because we all have different traumas, we all have different emotional triggers, and we all come from different histories and different backgrounds. And certainly there are exclusions here. There are valid reasons for being a certain way and all that. Um, And we can get into those on a case-by-case basis. But I'm talking about in general, especially for you, Linda. You asked me, what would you advise me in this situation? I think those five steps are what I would advise. So I really hope this helps you, Linda, and anyone listening. And I, I am grateful for you tuning in today and accepting the quality of the audio the way it is. Again, if you're the first time listener, listen to my other episodes. It is usually higher quality, higher production value and all that. But I really want to get an episode out. I really want to answer this question today and give you something to think about when it comes to anyone in your life or any situation or any job that you have or anything that you do on a regular basis that either brings you happiness or not, that either adds to your life or takes away from it. Think about these things. Think about what you have in your life that causes you to feel more positive or more negative and what you can do for less exposure or just like I said with especially with people uh, showing up more authentically and finding out who sticks around and who doesn't finding out who supports you and who doesn't and you will see your life change I've done this I have gone through these steps I would not tell you to go through these steps if I hadn't done it myself I also wouldn't tell you to do it if I knew it didn't work And I know this works, but it is scary because you end up finding out who is really important in your life and who finds you important in your life. Because what ends up happening is when you show up as your authentic self and you start expressing yourself in ways that are more honest than people are used to, you're either going to get a backlash and people aren't going to like it, or you're going to find out who really loves you, respects you, supports you. Because they're going to say, wow, I never realized that I was hurting you. Or I never realized that my behavior was so harmful. And I'm so sorry. I would love to talk about this. I would love to change that. Those are the kind of people that you want in your life. And as far in my opinion, those are the kind of people that even when they're being toxic, whether they know it or not, when they can get into that space in themselves and say, wow, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize that was hurting you. Uh, let's talk about this or I'll definitely try to be aware of that next time. That's the kind of person that actually has empathy for you, that cares about you, that wants the best for you, that wants you to be happy. I think it's so important to surround yourself with people that want you to be happy. Not that everybody has to want you to be happy, but it's a lot better than people that are so focused on themselves that they don't care how you feel. That's when you're around the people that aren't necessarily going to fulfill you in a way that makes you happier in the long run. Just my thought. (laughs) Again, thank you so much for tuning in. It's a shorter episode today. I'm so glad you joined me. Uh, A couple things I want to say. First of all, if you haven't heard the uh, Love and Abuse podcast, I highly recommend you tune into that. If you are in any type of toxic relationship, I don't care if it's a romantic relationship, family a co-worker, any relationship that feels controlling, manipulative, emotionally abusive, that show is all about um, poisonous communication and toxic behavior. Go check it out at loveandabuse.com. I also want to remind you about the safe empowerment system for anxiety. If you go to quietbegins.com, you can check that out if you are dealing with any type of anxiety. That's a program, it's sort of like a mini workshop that helps you through it and even getting to the point where repeated listens will help you dissolve it. Check that out at quietbegins.com. I also want to thank uh, Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com for some of the music transitions in normal episodes of The Overwhelmed Brain. And um, just a final thought, I realize that the stuff I talk about, it can be from a level of healing and growth that I've done that might take other people 28 giant leaps of faith where it might take me one small step in that direction. I realize that there is a healing and growth process that has to take place for you to just suddenly show up as your authentic self in front of people that you've never done that before. Uh, That does take 
some time. Like one of the first things I did toward that goal of being able to show up as honest and authentic to people that I hadn't necessarily done that with before was to honor myself in tiny ways first. And even the tiny ways were hard. Even the tiny ways were a giant leap of faith. For example, when I was working for someone, I think back in 2009 or something, and um, my boss put me on the spot and I decided to give him an honest answer, which was a leap of faith because I thought I might get fired, uh, instead of something that was butt kissing (laughs) or people pleasing. I decided to be honest, you know, because I was starting to honor myself, honor my integrity. And these little challenges will always come up when you start doing things for yourself to help you get better at it. That's the way I look at it is if you want to get better at something, then do the thing you want to get better at and you will be challenged. So these little challenges would come up and I would take advantage of them. Oh, this is an opportunity to be myself, to be honest. What would happen if I was honest at this moment? Well, I didn't actually answer that question. I just did it and found out what the answer was. That's scary because it involves accepting the worst case scenario. I could get fired. I could get yelled at. I could be hurt in some way. But I decided to take those risks and take those challenges because I really, really wanted to get better at it. I want you to get better at it. I want you to be in that space where something will come along that you find challenging and you look at that and go, oh, here's my chance. I want you to see these as chances to improve yourself, to become more fulfilled, more satisfied, more happy, more peaceful, more comfortable in life. Instead of hiding who you really are and what you really want to say all the time, to be able to put that out there, express yourself and be the vulnerable person that it will take because it's going to feel like all of your armor is off when you take this leap of faith and know that it could be that proverbial punch in the gut. Hopefully not a real one, but a proverbial punch in the gut where you honor yourself and find out how the world responds. And that is a leap of faith. But that's what I started doing in my life. I started seeing these little challenges come along and asking myself if I really wanted to be in, in, in integrity. Do I really want to be in alignment with who I really am? Do I really want to match my internal thoughts and my intentions with my external behavior and words? And when I said, yes, that's who I really want to be, my life started changing. And yours can too. If you're not doing this already, I highly recommend that you start taking these challenges, start seeing the challenges coming at you and telling yourself, hey, this is a challenge. Let me try. It's not easy. It's scary. And yes, sometimes you'll lose a relationship. Sometimes you'll lose a connection. But what it does is free you from the hindering elements that keep you from happiness. It does. It it frees you because you find out who supports you and who doesn't. Who wants you to be happy and who isn't in it for your happiness and only theirs? You find out a lot of things. And so as these revelations open up to you, it again is scary, but it's also liberating. It's also freeing and it feels pretty damn good. I want that for you. So just remember to always keep an open mind so that you can step into your power. This will help you be firm in your decisions and actions so that you can create the life you want. Always take steps to grow and evolve. You are powerful beyond measure. And above all, and this is something I absolutely know to be true about you, you are amazing. Amazing.